So yeah, I'm in my garage, it's filled with haze. I live in Texas, it's the summertime, it's about 115 degrees. But my camera can now shoot 4K60, so I thought I would try some, some epic cinematic B-roll and talk to you about the Antiquarian Echo, a sound I'm sharing with you now, and it'll be up for a while. Then it'll go away and maybe come back again in some kind of capacity, so grab it quick. But this is a super simple guitar sound, and I thought I would talk about the instruments and then tell you how you can make it yourself or something very similar. If you're scared of sampling a piano because there's so many notes and round robins and all that stuff, this has five stereo audio files, so it's super simple. It starts with this guitar here. It's called the, Ant I'm not left-handed. It's the Antiquarian Echo. It was built for a friend of mine. It's got his name on it. His name is Ian Shouse, and he's my favorite guitar player ever. He just always plays what I want to hear. And this was built for him, and I was going to buy a guitar from him, and he sold it out from under me. And then he told me that he had this guy. It's a Frankenstein of a guitar, P90s, super simple volume and tone, but I, I love the sound it makes. The sound of this guitar not terribly important in this particular project, and you'll see why. Because the main part of this sound comes from this Roland Chorus Echo. I found this in a church. They were about to throw it away, and I rescued it. How about that? Once in a lifetime finds. Unfortunately, I have not used this thing as much as I should. It's not in the best shape, but I think that played in my favor for this particular sound, because what I wanted to make was a pad sound that evolved over time that I could play a note and it would just kind of do its thing forever. If you want to watch our super in-depth video about making pads from Tape Echoes, Christian Henson video, I'll link to it in the description, go watch it. It's amazing. This one is much simpler. So all I did is, to be honest, I don't know what I did. I had the settings, all the reverbs and all that on, but basically I would hit a note, I laid it on my lap and I would hit the E and I would let the E ring out as long as it could. And then I would start adjusting the intensity and repeat knobs to get some variation on the sound. And sometimes it would get a little distorted and I would clean that up later. I'd have files that would go on for, you know, 30 or 45 seconds at least, I believe. And then I layered that with another version, another performance of me doing the same thing, printed those down into five stereo audio files. All right, I'm dying. Time to move back into the studio, but fun fact, if I were to stay out here and continue to sweat, I would sweat a perfect heart on my chest. I have visual proof of this, no exaggeration. All right, this is much better. Let's look at this Pro Tools session. Here's the first note that I played. It's a low E string, and you can hear at the beginning that it kind of skips with the delays and then it settles in. And so I left that in the sample in the instrument, but I moved the start time ahead so you don't hear it. But you can definitely go back and move the sample start time to the very beginning and get that effect if you want it. So visually, you can see where I was increasing the intensity and the repeats, and then I would bring them down and then bring them back up again for the next minute or so. When I was creating the sound, there were points where it distorted, and I edited those moments out later. You'll probably notice that's panned to the left because I went and made another recording and panned it to the right and layered it on top. Now the files I'm giving you have those two sounds baked together, left and right. In retrospect, I don't know if that's the best move. There's some interesting things that are happening in each one, and it might be more obvious and more interesting if it was just the one take for each note. So I may revisit that down the road when I revisit this plugin. Here you can see I continued on and did the A string, the D string, the G string, the B string, and then the E string again. E, A, D, G, B, E. Yeah, that's it. Now what I have here in this section, this is where I printed those two stereo files down to one stereo file. And you can see that, for instance, on this A string, there were some moments where it distorted. So I went in and made some crossfades and you can't really tell, it's just kind of part of the sound. Notice that on these plugins, I did some EQ adjustments. 
mostly kind of some low mid resonance that I got rid of. And then I printed them into my final tracks. I named them. I didn't have the name at that point, but I was just calling it CE Guitar Pad for Chorus Echo Guitar Pad. E, A, D, G, B, and E. And those are the only files in the instrument. I forgot to mention earlier that I ran this sound through my Kemper amp, and I actually used a bass amp setting that I thought sounded good, and I rolled the top way off to give a darker, moody sound. So now, let's take a look at the actual instrument. First off, notice that I've done quite a bit of work on my user interface. Now, I still don't know where all this is gonna land and if I'm gonna sell it down the road or whatever, but I'm just gonna share these things with you as I make them. Did this in Knob Man and learning my way around Illustrator, but here are the guts of the sample. I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how you will map these sounds. So say I take this low E, I'm gonna drag it into anywhere in here. And then I'm gonna make sure it's selected and I'm gonna right click. And this is just, just do what I do, okay? <laughs> You'll learn later. Auto map setup, we're gonna to go to where it says E1 and we're gonna make that the high key. And then we're gonna make it the low key and hit apply. It, just trust me again. But as long as your note value and your root note match up, then you should be in pretty good shape. And then I took this and dragged it down so that when you play super low notes, you can still hear it. Notice the same with the A, the D, the G, and the B, and then the high E, I stretched that up. Now, if you go down here, notice that I have start points and end points set. And you can see, for instance, on this high E, that my start point is much farther along than the beginning of the track. So if I played this note, let's go up higher here. You have that sound. Now, you also have to take into account the ADSR. So I'm gonna take my attack and bring it all the way up so that when I press this, you should hear the sound immediately. So when I back off here, you may or may not want that. And you can also notice that these are very different from beginning to end. So you may want to adjust the start and end points to a, to a part of the sound that you think is the most interesting. If we come down here and notice that we have a low pass filter and that low pass filter is also on this front panel. So if I were to play a chord here, And I have the resonance control here, so you can do fun things like this. I also have an EQ here. It looks like I'm taking out 4 dB around 300 hertz. It seemed to build up even though I took quite a bit out during the process of recording. So you might wanna go visit that if uh, you wanna make some adjustments on EQ. That is not on the front panel. You can also look in the script here. I uh, Maybe in, in future videos, I will talk about how I am learning my way around scripting and contact. I took this class from a guy at Extant Audio, I forget his name, but it's a he's got multiple videos that you can purchase and they've been really helpful for me. Even though I only understand about two words out of every 10 that he says, it's been very helpful. I've been doing a pretty good job thinking about how I'm gonna start my videos and then I get the meat of it done, but I always forget to end the video. So I was editing last night and realized that there was no ending. So this is the ending, eating my toast, drinking coffee. I do wanna tell you about Xtant Audio, X-T-A-N-T-Audio.com. That is the website where I got the contact scripting tutorials that have been very helpful. So go check those out. And I have one more request. I try not to get bogged down in all the YouTube analytics, although I do check way too many times how many people have viewed my videos. But the next bar to reach is 4,000 watch hours. I'm not there yet. You get something when you get 1,000 subscribers, and then 4,000 watch hours, 
it probably means absolutely nothing, but it's a goal of mine to get there. And so if you're still watching this video at this point, I would like to kindly ask you to watch some more of my videos. And I might suggest that you go watch the Paper Trail album video. I went back and put every piece of drone footage and footage that I had and I put the songs back to back so it's 30 minutes of the album and 30 minutes of all the footage so you can just let that roll. Perhaps it's bad form to beg for watch hours but I did it and I appreciate your support and I'll see you next week. Take care.